good friend of mine on Facebook, uh, Naomi, she sent me an article yesterday, and it was from late, well, the latter part of 2010, towards the end of the year, but it really struck a nerve with me, and so I decided to go ahead and do a little research beyond that, see where the Holy Spirit led me, and here's where he led me. In late 2010, there was Arab, an Arab council in the Middle East who said that Mr. Obama should be their new caliphate. Now, just so you know, the caliphate, the last one they had was in the early 20s, 1920s. And the caliphate is the person who, <coughs> excuse me, who replaces their prophet Muhammad as the big man who unites all of the Arabs under one umbrella, this caliphate is the big boss, and he holds everything, everything steady, and keeps things going. And they believe that the next caliphate will be the last one, or the re-emergence of the Prophet Muhammad, or in other words, their Antichrist. And I, I did some research online, started googling to see if this was an isolated event. It's not isolated at all. Other Arabs have been calling for Mr. Obama to be the caliphate, even as late as the spring of this year. They were saying that he needs to go to ground zero and say some Arabic prayer and wrap himself in some kind of a cloak and that would make him the new caliphate and he would be followed by all the Arabs in the whole world as their their holy one, their, uh, their the equivalent of the Antichrist or their prophet Muhammad. Very interesting stuff. So then I started going back again and started seeing where what Mr. Obama's been doing in the meantime. There have only been two other sitting presidents besides Mr. Obama to win the Nobel Peace Prize. And this guy won it right out of the gate. As soon as he took office, he never should have accepted it, should have gave it back, should have refused it because it was baloney. The other two presidents in 1905 and 1919, they won the Nobel Peace Prize for going out and stopping a major war and for starting the fledgling part of the United Nations. That's where they won it from. And I apologize for the dogs barking, but I can't stop the video to make them stop barking. So that's why they won the Nobel Peace Prize, and this guy won it out of the gate for nothing. And the Bible says that the Antichrist will come out on a, on a, on a platform of peace, on a platform of safety, and that's what this guy came out on. He came out on a, a platform of peace and a platform of safety. And he even said earlier this year, before he started his forward communist uh, slash socialism manifesto that all of the, all the old bad guys have used, he said that his main theme this year, one of his main themes is going to be running on peace and safety. And so Mr. Obama won the Nobel Peace Prize for peace and safety and for global co cooperation. Hmm. This is out of the blue, out of nowhere, this guy won this. It is totally, totally, totally ridiculous. I can't believe that they even gave this to him. And so then I started thinking, well, what else has Mr. Obama done that, that's totally out of whack? And again, in 2009, he's the first ever sitting U.S. president defying the Constitution all the way to the bottom by uh, being the head of the U.N. Security Council. Unheard of. Presidents are not allowed to do that by by way of the Constitution. Mr. Obama didn't care. He went ahead and just went out and did it because it doesn't matter to him. And you look at the EU. A lot of people say the EU is going to be where the future Antichrist is going to come from. I don't know. I'm not so sure about that. It's possible. It's possible Mr. Obama could be the head of the EU someday. Who knows? But the bottom line is, he runs the EU. Mr. Obama tells them when to jump, and they jump. They ask him how high, and they jump that high. It doesn't matter what's going on, he runs the EU. Those people do what he wants them to do. They do his bidding. And there have been rumblings that people in the EU have, have thought about, well, what about asking Obama to be uh, to run for the head of the EU if he's not president anymore? All kinds of crazy stuff has been going on. Here's the bottom line. Look at what the Bible says about the Antichrist. I've covered it so many times, but I'll cover it briefly here. A few key things. First of all, and this is the most obvious thing to me, we'll start with the most obvious, that the Antichrist will be different than all the rest of the, of the uh, previous uh, world leaders. How can he be different? If someone was bigger, taller, shorter, if they were stronger, if they were weaker, if they had different color eyes, if they came from a different religious background, if they came from a different uh, set of, of uh, a different part of society, would that be make them different than the rest? There's been a hodgepodge of world leaders from all these different types of, of uh, backgrounds 
going all the way back to the beginning of time. But what there has never been, there's never been an African American world leader of, an, on a, of a huge nation. Never. This is the first time. There's no more different than you could possibly get than to have the first African American to ever run a huge country. That's as different as different can be. The, 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 that, there is no more different. That just covers it totally, without any doubt whatsoever. And you look and see that the Antichrist will rise from, a, from out of nowhere and he'll become a, like a, a, a governor, they call it, in the Bible, but that's the equivalent of a senator, like in Roman times and the old times. So he did that out of nowhere. He became a senator and then president of the U.S. He'll succeed at everything he tries to do. Mr. Obama has succeeded at everything he tries to do. So many people have said, well, you know, Mr. Obama hasn't succeeded. He's messed up on this, this, and this. No, he hasn't. Everything he's done, he succeeded at. His his method and his uh, goal is to wreck this nation and to mess up the world. He succeeded on every level. Everything he does, he has a method of his madness. Every single thing he's tried to do, he succeeds at. And again, he'll run on peace and safety. That's what this guy's been doing. He's been. Notice how the wars have been dying down. Notice how things have been slowing down. Now, the Middle East, yeah, it's been raging. The Middle East has been raging like like a like a um, like hell on earth, and it's going to because it has to for the Psalm 83 war and for the Gog Magog war, and for the seven year peace treaty to be signed. That has to happen. But the rest of the world, look at the peace that's everywhere. Mr. Obama has been bringing peace all around this globe through all types of channels. This guy is very, 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 very bad news, and those who can't see it. I'm sorry, you're just blind, my friends. You just don't have any type of, of you don't have any type of um, common sense or any type of, of um, spiritual insight at all. I'm not saying that he definitely is the future Antichrist, but I'm saying that I'm 99% sure that he is. And until someone else comes out that matches everything he matches in the short amount of time we have before the rapture, he's the man. If someone else does come out, he just gets added to the list. Doesn't get taken off the list. Another man gets added to the list. I just don't see it. I see this as the man who's going to be, and like I posted yesterday, the Salt Lake City Tribune, the newspaper in Salt Lake City of the capital of Mormon land, USA, endorsed Mr. Obama over Romney. They said that Romney does not deserve to be president, and they called Romney all kinds of names. Mormons never turn on each other. Mormons are thick as thieves. For that to happen, like I said yesterday, the equivalent of that would be for Ahmadinejad or Morosi to come out and say that Jesus and Jehovah God are the, are the true prophet and God, not Allah and Muhammad. That would never happen. That's the equivalent of this. Everything is just turning. Obama is loved around the world. So many people say he's also hated. He is hated. He's hated by Christians. Christians don't like Obama at all. But what's the Bible say about the Antichrist? He'll be loved by all, but despised by Christians. Bottom line is this, my friends. Understand we're in the last of the last days. Jesus Christ is going to return imminently, any second of any day. Are you going to be ready? Are you going to be prepared to go in the rapture? Are you spiritually ready? Are you saved by Jesus' Jesus' blood? Are you repenting of your sins after you're saved? Because if you're not, you're not going to go to heaven. You won't step foot into heaven. It's not my words. It's the words of the Holy Bible. You convict yourself. I don't convict you. So what, what's it going to be? Is it going to be to follow the things of this world or to follow the things of heaven? To follow all the lies and the filth and the lust of the flesh or follow Jesus Christ? It's easy, my friends. If you're saved by Jesus' blood, if you repent of your sins after, after you're saved, every time you sin, keep your garment spotless. Like the Bible says 200 times, you have to repent of your sins after being saved. And you live the way the Bible tells you, you'll go in the rapture, you'll go in heaven. There's zero doubt that you won't. It's, it's that easy. But see, most Christians want to live with the lust of the flesh. They want to live with the, with the loves of this world and all of the, the trappings this world has to offer. I can't stand this world. I don't like anything in this world except family and friends and those that I witness to. I can't stand it. It holds nothing for me. I want to go to heaven. I want to be raptured, but I know I've got work to do until then. So the bottom line is, it's an easy choice. It's A or B. What do you want to do? Do you want to continue to refuse to ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior? Or if you're backslidden, continue to refuse to repent because you're too haughty, arrogant, and cocky and go to hell? Or are you going to ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior and repent of those sins if you're backslidden and go to heaven? It's a no-brainer. Choose now. Time's almost up. Let's pray. I love you, Jesus. I thank you so much for your goodness and your mercy. I thank you for your kindness and for your generosity. And I pray that you would just wake people up to the truth. They could see what's going on around us and understand their preconceived notions that man has been shared, sharing all the lies man. I used to listen to man all the time. Man would tell me things that they thought the Bible said, which were lies. You have to read the Bible, 
see what the Bible says, understand it, ask the Holy Spirit to guide you, and whatever he tells you is always going to be biblical. If it's not, it's not from him. And there's not only, only one man on the face of the planet that, that matches all the biblical descriptions of the Antichrist. That's Mr. Obama, the only one that's ever been known in, in the spotlight. Please help people to repent if they're backslidden, to come to know you as Lord and Savior if they don't know you, and to do it now before time runs out. Just stay on them and hound them and rebuke them, correct them, and teach them, and just drag them in sackcloth and ashes if you have to. Master, until they do. If you're precious name, I ask it. Amen. If you watch this video and don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I love you. I thank you for everything, and I just praise you. And I pray that you would just help people to, to pray this prayer with me and so they can be saved. Here's the prayer. Jesus, I know I've sinned. I've done bad things in my life, and I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again the third day, went back to heaven to be at the right-hand side of the Father. And since that time, you've been making a place in heaven for all Christians forever. Please forgive me my sins. Wash my heart white as snow. Come live in my heart. Make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. When you pray this prayer, Jesus says that all who come to me and ask shall be saved. And once you get saved, get your King James Version Bible. It's the living, breathing Word of God. The way you feed your body with food and water every day, this Bible will feed your spirit and soul if you read it every day. Pray to Jesus every day. He loves you. He's your new best friend and wants to hear from you every single day. Obviously, Satan doesn't want this message getting out because he's had the dogs barking and howling like crazy, which they normally don't do. And the cell phone ringing, Satan, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. You will never win. Jesus runs a show in this house, in, this, in these ministries, not you. So away with you, Satan. In Jesus' name, I rebuke you. Get behind me. Make sure that you are water baptized as soon as you can. Immersion baptized, dunked underwater at a Christian church. You've been sprinkled baptized in the past, doesn't count. Do it over again, my friends. Pray to be filled with the Holy Spirit from head to toe as you draw closer to Christ and what little time we have left before the imminent rapture. You do that by reading the Bible, by praying, by living for Jesus Christ. Take your King James Version Bible to church. When the pastor preaches, when I talk, when anyone does, you check your Bible and compare it. If what they say don't match, you close your Bible, you get up and you walk out immediately, you unfriend, you unsubscribe, you run away as fast as you can because anyone who would lie to you, in Jesus' name, anyone who would lie to you about what God's own word says, they will drag you to hell, my friends, right along with them. It's very, very important. If you have questions, comments, concerns, you want me to pray for anything from a terminal illness to a sick pet, anything in between, contact me. I had the gift of faith, mustard seed faith. I didn't earn it or deserve it, but praise the Lord. When I prayed for it, he gave it to me. And I see miracles every day in my ministries, my friends. I see miracles every day that just, that doctors and people say are impossible. Nothing's impossible with the master physician, Jesus Christ. And when he performs these miracles, like if I pray for you for a miracle, I know he'll perform that miracle if it's within his holy will. And if he does, like he has all the other miracles, it'll be all through his praise, honor, glory, power, might, strength, majesty, love, compassion, mercy, kindness, gentleness, tenderness. Nothing to do with me at all. All I am is his slave. I'm the least in his kingdom, a tiny fish in a huge ocean. Please share the link to this video and channel with friends, neighbors, co-workers, loved ones, and strangers. Drop it in a blog, plant the seed, and walk away. Let God water it so it can grow. The cotton candy, powder puff, syrupy, fluff garbage you hear all across the internet, all across churches, it leads people to hell. The word that leads people to heaven, the, the true word of God that leads people to the cross of Christ where they can repent of their sins and be saved, that makes them want to repent of their sins in their backslidden state, is a King James Version Bible. The true word of God. Cover to cover. First chapter book, Genesis to Revelation, all 66 books the way we're preaching on this channel. Not because I'm anything as God's everything. I love you guys. I pray for you every day. May God bless you. Thanks.